So I actually got into personal finance while I was a sophomore at the University of Southern California, became a broker during my senior year in college, and then started my business straight after that. And it was a rocky road, but those things led to me becoming America's Money Maven. So when I came out of college and started my boutique real estate and mortgage brokerage, I thought that I had hit the jackpot and that I would ride that way forever, making great money, doing what I wanted to do until the recession began. Over the next year and some change, what I knew to be this great seven figure life ended up becoming me scraping up change to feed my daughter. The first thing that I remember needing to do was just take personal responsibility. Yes, there was a lot going on with the economy. I wanted to blame the president, the economy, the hospital, the banks. But the problem is I gave my power away every time I did that. And when I finally said, Patrice, you have to look at what you've done. What did you do to contribute to this? Because while all of these things are true, there's some things that you didn't do to safeguard yourself. And the only way that you're gonna be prepared for when a time like this comes again is to start to take inventory. And so I took inventory, not just of what we had purchased, because in the moment it felt like we had the money to purchase the 13 pieces of real estate property and to have all of the staff and employees, but we never really, we being my husband and I, we never really thought about what it would take to sustain those things on our worst month. I realized that had I made different decisions, perhaps I could have weathered that storm a little differently. When I talk about studying your debt, what I really mean is just know your numbers. You know, when I was a personal finance coach and I would sit across the room from people or across the table from people and start to ask them about their numbers, I would always get people looking up to the ceiling going, uh, I think it's about, maybe I spend, it's round about these numbers, but if you're always guesstimating, then how can you create a concrete plan? to pay down your debt and to move forward. And so even though it's probably really uncomfortable, a lot of us avoid opening the mail, we avoid the emails from our creditors, but here's the thing, not looking at it doesn't mean that it's going away. So once you get the numbers down, now you can really create a plan. So what I did was actually call each one of my creditors. I know it's gonna take a long time. I know you don't wanna be on hold, but the only way to find out about if there's any flexible repayment options or if anyone is doing any type of forgiveness for financial hardships is to have the hard conversations. And what I found personally is that when I was proactive about calling, as opposed to waiting for people to come find me, I got much more favorable results. You don't always wanna hear when we're in the midst of our pain that there might actually be purpose in it, but I know for myself and for many others, we figured out who we were and what fulfilled us and what actually brought us joy in the midst of one of the most tumultuous times in our lives. I get paid to talk. Talking is what I got in trouble for my entire, <laughs> my entire adolescence. Like I got in trouble, talks too much on the report card, teachers telling me to be quiet, but it's the very thing that I do now. And I used to help my friends or help people do things or do little speeches at church and never thought much of it. You can take anything that you do naturally and create something that other people want. There is a void with your name on it and people are just waiting for you to step up and say, hey, I'll do it. So do it. Invest in you. Ready, set, grow. CNBC and Acorns.